Greetings once again from Mission Control Houston. Welcome to round two of our live Soyuz undocking departure and landing coverage here tonight on NASA TV. Joining us once again here in the International Space Station flight control room, a different team now on console than when we were previously on the air for our hatch closure. The Orbit 1 team now sitting here. They're going to be led by Flight Director Rick Henflein. He's there in the blue tie in the suit on the right. And then just above him is Andreas Mogensen. He'll be serving as the Capcom for tonight's operations. A lot of the activity, though, will be on the other side of the planet in the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, where they're going to be overseeing the departure and eventual landing of this Soyuz spacecraft tonight, with three crew members departing from Expedition 53 on board. And as mentioned, this is round two. We already had the hatch closure earlier tonight, that successful, and now we're marching towards an undocking the Soyuz MS-05 spacecraft uh, on the right side of your screen there. Currently docked still to the Rosviet module. Um, that command scheduled to come in a little under 30 minutes from now. Uh, the command will be given by the crew on board to undock the Soyuz spacecraft, slowly back away, and begin the journey back down home. Just running through uh, a quick sequence of events for you tonight. As mentioned, we've already done uh, the hatch closure that came a couple of hours ago. Uh, the hatch being closed successfully at 8.02 p.m. Central Time, 9.02 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, since that hatch closure, they've undergone a series of leak checks on the vehicle and then the crew on board also getting suited up um, and all of that going smoothly. Um, so again, now we're in the midst of our undocking coverage here on NASA TV. And the command is expected to be given in under 30 minutes with the actual physical separation of the spacecraft from the station targeted to come at 11.14 p.m. Central Time. And the Soyuz will watch it back away and eventually fly out of the neighborhood of the International Space Station. All of that setting it up for its eventual landing in Kazakhstan. When we come back on the air for our deorbit burn and landing coverage at 1.15 a.m. Central, We'll just be moments away from the Soyuz craft doing its deorbit burn, not a firing of the engines to alter the spacecraft's orbit, eventually pretty much pinpointing it down for a landing in Kazakhstan on the other side of its orbit from where it fires those engines. All of that setting up for a landing at 2.37 a.m. Central, 3.37 a.m. Eastern Time. On board the spacecraft right now, the three crew members getting ready to leave the space station. They are NASA astronaut Randy Bresnik, the outgoing Expedition 53 commander, and he's joined inside the spacecraft by Sergei Rosansky, a Roscosmos cosmonaut, along with Paolo Nespoli from the European Space Agency. And so, as mentioned, they got the hatches closed just a couple of hours ago. Uh, the three crew members first saying farewell uh, to their crewmates who are remaining on board. Again, this is a replay from just a little bit earlier. There in the blue shirt, Alexander Mazurkin, the now Expedition 54 commander who took uh, command from um, Randy Bresnik earlier today. Uh, just behind him in the gray there, that's uh, Sergei Rosansky. He's going to be the Soyuz commander in the center seat for all of the operations tonight. Uh, there in the blue shirt on the left, Randy Bresnik, the NASA astronaut, completing his second space flight. Um, he's going to be the right seater for this flight down. And then Paolo Nespoli, third and final in the black shirt there, coming into view, saying farewell to Alexander Mazurkin. He's in the left seat, also uh, bringing an end to his second space flight, his second long duration stay on board the International Space Station. And so again, this video, all the crew members saying farewell. Uh, three crew members remaining on board, Alexander Mazurkin, uh, who we've seen, and then just into view there, uh, the two NASA astronauts, Mark Vandehei and Joe Acaba. Those three are going to be staying on board until uh, the early parts of 2018, uh, scheduled to come home at the end of February. But again, there'll be three of the crew members for Expedition 54, and that expedition will formally begin the moment that this Soyuz tonight undocks from the International Space Station. So while uh, Alexander Mazurkin's already assumed command of the station, uh, his next Expedition 54 will formally begin 
uh, in just about 22 minutes and 45 seconds from now. But the crew member is able to say farewell to uh, the three other uh, astronauts and cosmonauts that they've been living with the la for the last several months. Uh, Bresnik, Rosansky, and Nespoli have been on board the International Space Station since July 28th. And with their landing today, they're going to be wrapping up 139 days on board the orbiting laboratory. Everything went fine with the hatch closure earlier this evening. Uh, the hatch closed first on the Soyuz side and second on the uh, station side in the Rosfiat module, uh, which is where we're still getting this view. Again, this is a replay from earlier this evening of that hatch closure activity. Since the hatches were closed, uh, the crew members have undergone uh, the suit-up activities. They're now in their Sokol launch and entry suits that they're going to be wearing for the duration of their flight back down to the ground. Also doing a leak check on the Soyuz vehicle itself, ensuring the hatch is secure. And that was reported uh, by the Russian flight control team uh, to have gone well. No issues tracked. An airtight hatch um, uh, confirmed. And again, that just all done in the, uh, a couple of hours since. Again, these hatches uh, were closed at 8.02 p.m. Central Time, 9.02 p.m. Eastern. And that's when, uh, as we'll see in just a moment, when Mazurkin was uh, able to close the hatch on the station side. The hatch on the Soyuz closed first. The hatch on the station side closed second after he uh, first cleaned it, uh, just ensuring it was free of any potential debris, just to ensure that they have a tight seal on this hatch once it's closed. And the hatches were closed while the station was flying just about 253 statute miles over the Philippine Sea. They were just to the south of Japan. And they're going to be around the same area when the undocking command comes, a little bit further off to the east, um, as they are one more orbit around the planet. So their orbit has uh, shifted to the, or rather to the west. Um, so their orbit has shifted uh, quite a few miles to the west and we'll get an exact location once this undocking command comes. But again, this hatch closure that you're watching right now, a replay from a couple of hours ago, Mazurkin on the station side getting the hatch closed at 8.02 p.m. Central Time, 9.02 p.m. Eastern. And again, since that hatch was closed successfully, they've just continue through the checklist of items to get their vehicle ready to depart, uh, executing a leak check uh, that the Russian Mission Control Center reported had gone without any issues, ensuring a, an airtight hatch for the Soyuz MS-05 vehicle. And then just a few moments ago, about 20 minutes ago, the teams here in the room were polled by Flight Director Rick Henfling for a go-no-go -go for the undocking. And just pending a couple of items that were uh, still to come in the timeline, all systems reported go on the Houston side. So everything marching for an on-time undocking and departure. Again, that's scheduled to come just a little over 19 minutes from now. Uh, at first, the undocking command will be given. And then after about a minute or so, typically about a minute and 30 seconds after the command is confirmed, a series of hooks holding the Soyuz spacecraft in place will slowly retract and then it will back away slowly. It'll be able to execute a series of departure burns, bringing it away from the International Space Station, eventually leaving the immediate orbit or the immediate area around. All of that will set up for the deorbit and landing burn, uh, that coming um, uh, uh, several orbits later. And the Soyuz spacecraft will fire the engines on its propulsion module and send it into a changing its orbit, setting it up for that pinpoint landing. Eventually, the two of the three modules will de detach the orbital and the propulsion module, leaving only the descent module, the centerpiece, with the three crew members inside. Using the protection of a heat shield, it'll slow down eventually uh, enough for the large parachute to deploy for a much uh, slower parachuted-assisted landing in Kazakhstan. First, the drogue chute will deploy followed by the main chute, the, lar the one large main chute, uh, which will also reorient the capsule. And then just moments before touchdown, about three feet or so, 
A series of soft landing jets will fire to help slow the vehicle down to its final speed and then give them a uh, semi-soft touchdown there in Kazakhstan. They're going to be landing to just about east-southeast of the town of Jezkazgan in the central part of the country. And here a quick view of the nation of Kazakhstan. You can see the landing site there, Jezkazgan, uh, off to the left of that landing site. That is where all of the search and recovery forces are going to be staging out of, and they're going to be making their way there uh, towards the landing site in the near future. And they'll be arriving in a series of vehicles. Uh, we'll do a quick run through here, uh, including two fixed wing aircraft, an Antonov 12 and an Antonov 26, which will be in doing high overflights over the, uh, the landing zone, also establishing communication with the Soyuz spacecraft while it's descending under its parachutes. The bulk of the landing teams, though, will be arriving via helicopter and Russian Mi 8 helos. Um, uh, and then uh, an additional team will be arriving via ATV on the ground uh, for winter landings like these. The weather can be somewhat uncooperative at times, uh, necessitating the uh, use of alternate means of travel. The ATV is much more rugged and able to get through the elements to ensure that we have uh, search and recovery forces there at the landing zone. Weather, though, in Kazakhstan is being reported to be cooperative for right now, although quite frigid. Uh, temperatures hovering right around 10 degrees Fahrenheit with the wind chill at around negative 5. So definitely going to be a brisk welcome back to Earth for these crew members who haven't uh, been experiencing the sight, sounds, weather, uh, the feels and the smells of planet Earth for about six months. But everything so far going well. We should be getting some good video signal and plenty of daylight for this undocking. So hoping for a pretty spectacular view as the MS-05 detaches from the Rosviet module with Randy Bresnik, Sergey Rosansky, and Paolo Nespoli safely inside. But again, right now we're a little over 15 minutes away from the undocking command. And then once that is given, well, it'll just be about one minute until that separation from the Rosviet module. The vehicle will slowly back away and then begin its uh, departure from the area around the International Space Station. Barry, Go ahead. for page 82. The work prep. Is it complete? Yes. Copy. Everything is complete. And we are starting for the time of um, activation of the SPV. We copy. And so now you're going to start hearing some chatter between the crew inside the Soyuz. You'll primarily hear from Sergei Rosansky, who's the Soyuz commander sitting in the center seat and responsible for overseeing the flight away from the International Space Station and ultimately the landing. And he'll be conversing with the teams in Mission Control Moscow, uh, located in Koryov, just outside of the city, where they will be overseeing the operations and all the commanding with the vehicle during its departure. And so now we're just 13 minutes away from the undocking command scheduled issuance time. Again, that'll 
get issued right around 11:13 uh, p.m. Central Time. And after we get the confirmation that that command has been given, it'll take about a minute and a half for all of those hooks to open. And then some springs will actually push the Soyuz spacecraft slowly away from the Rosviet module. And then we'll see it slowly start to drift away, eventually uh, firing some engines on the vehicle to do what's known as a separation burn, a short eight second burn. Uh, to just bring it further away from the International Space Station, and then it'll be on its way away, uh, and then eventually setting up for all of that deorbit burn and landing activities. And while we stand by for things to pick up with the issuance of that command, getting some pretty spectacular views of the planet beneath. The station just about to fly over the southwestern coast of India. And I'll pass smack dab over the middle of Nepal, out over China, Mongolia, before it eventually moves over the very far eastern part of Russia, and then over the northern Pacific Ocean. And in the next minute or so, we'll hear the chatter start to pick up as Mission Control Moscow will start giving the appropriate go-aheads for the crew to uh, activate a few more systems, including the undocking system. Moscow. You can activate display plus TV and uh, send R17 command. Copy, display plus TV is on, and we are sending R Romeo 17 command. Oh, this is beautiful. Yes, R R17, it's transmitter plus M. R-17 is sent, Moscow. Copy. So you have prepared T. And we're now just about 10 minutes away from the planned undocking time for the Soyuz MS-05 spacecraft. command should be sent from the panel in 20 seconds. Copy. Aydar, you know, we have an issue with an image. Uh, of course, it starts blinking. Uh, well, we are not receiving image on the ground yet. E2 is sent. 
Принято. Копи. Сервометр есть, хорошо. Надрыв. Три брус. Okay, so all Vudus 1, 2, and 1, 3, and also KDU repressed. And what about the image, Sergei? What the quality of the image you received? It is terrible. When I transition to the display approach, it starts blinking. And other displays are fine, but this one is blinking. Copy. On the maneuver display also it is blinking. Copy. Can you uh, recommend me anything? Uh, let's try uh, to uh, make uh, the screen, the full screen mode. Let's try that. Yes, I have it now full screen. Are you receiving the image? Not yet. It's uh, too bad. You know, it is constantly uh, blinking. So you have now full screen mode and still you have the same issue. Well, now it is stable. Now it is stable, Moscow. Copy. Copy that it is stabilized. So uh, please make sure uh, that the wide angle lens is selected and then AGC mode just once. Yes, it's R7 command. Cosmonaut Sergei Rosansky working through th things with the flight controllers in Mission Control Moscow. We're under six minutes away from the planned issuance of the undocking command. Inaudible. So AGC just to once, uh, we did that. It's R5, uh, you know, send it once. It is sent. Copy. Uh, the headlight uh, is being activated now. Copy. The headlight is on. So the joint uh, power is not illuminated, and uh, SSVP backup also is not illuminated. Copy. On the left side of your screen, you can see some mountains coming into view, the station and the Soyuz just flying over Nepal about to cross over into central China. And uh, on your go, we are ready. Under five minutes away from issuing the undocking command. Okay. Just a minute and a half after that, undocking from the Rosfiat module. This specified I'm a copy that it is a go, Moscow. The seven command is ready. Okay, stand by, Paolo. Now under three and a half minutes away from the undocking command being given, the crew told they're good to go on time. So everything continuing to march forward. The Soyuz MS-05 spacecraft, Randy Bresnak, Sergey Rosansky, and Paolo Nespoli inside, just minutes away from departing the International Space Station. Meanwhile, the Himalayas continue to pass by beneath 
the station itself uh, moving out over China now at an altitude of about 253 statute miles. Anybody reach the person? It's just unusual, Paolo. Body MCC Moscow. Go ahead. It's a reminder. In a minute, you will have to send the seven command. It's a reminder. Two minutes from undocking command. One minute to command. The seven is sent. So we have the seventeen. Visiting vehicle officer confirming the docking mechanism is activated. Thirteen. Yes, please uh, get the seventeen ready. It is already ready to be sent. It should be sent at uh, thirteen minutes. Yes. I confirm at 8.13, uh, the 17 will have to be sent from the panel. Copy. Ten seconds. Standing by for undocking command. It's the time. The command D-17 is sent on time. We have the LED illuminated. The transfer hatch is closed, and we go to page 84. Copy. So we've gotten confirmation the command has been given. The hook's now driving. So the hooks on the Soyuz spacecraft holding it in place are slowly going to retract. This takes about a minute and a half, and so we should expect in about a minute or so to see the Soyuz begin to separate from the International Space Station. This is a camera view from the very tip of the Soyuz spacecraft, looking back at the Rosviet module. On the ground, copy. It's been just a little over 45 seconds since the command was given. But the hooks continuing to retract should be under about 20 so seconds we from undocking. Have mechanical, uh, contact LED not illuminated. It, uh, it is not illuminated anymore. Copy. Yes, so we have a separation flag. And physical separation and undocking confirmed. 11.14 p.m. Central Time, 12.14 a.m. Eastern Time, with the station flying 255 statute miles over the southern part of Mongolia. the docking unit and interface. 
could you please check uh, and monitor that there are no foreign objects on the docking interface? Yes, we are looking at it and we cannot see anything there. Copy. And again, physical separation, the undocking confirmed 11.14 p.m. Central, 12.14 a.m. Eastern Time. The Springs pushing the Soyuz spacecraft with Randy Bresnik, Sergei Rosansky, and Paolo Nespoli away from where they've been living for the last 139 days aboard the International Space Station. The spacecraft slowly backing away now in just about a minute or so. Uh, or about two minutes, they'll begin a separation burn, a firing of thrusters on the Soyuz spacecraft, but for now, slowly backing away while the Earth continues to revolve in the background. Okay, so the separation is smooth. So everything progressing smoothly with the spacecraft should see that separation burn in about 45 seconds from now. And you can see the right now picking up. That separation burn has begun. The Soyuz now moving a little bit quicker away from the International Space Station, firing of the thruster to carry it out and away. So we received uh, the signal, the end of the, the time. A quick eight-second firing of the thrusters reported to have gone nominally. The burn already completed, and everything's still going extremely smoothly with this departure so far this evening. Again, this camera view from the tip of the Soyuz spacecraft looking back at the International Space Station. A-11, guys, A-11, correction, yes. A-11 is sent. A-11 is sent. The next one is D-8. So SSVP LED is not illuminated. We are deactivating the headlight. Now S18 command for for the headlight. I confirm. The headlight is deactivated. And now we are recording the parameters, the spherical tanks. 177177 and the propellant 524. Copy. So don't send get 4 command yet. Copy. We are going to page uh, 47. Yes, I confirm page 47. Actually, 48. The Soyuz MS-05 spacecraft continuing to retreat from view following an on-time undocking. The time again was 11.14 p.m. Central, 12.14 a.m. Eastern. 
The vehicle has since already executed its departure burn, everything going extremely smoothly with this departure this evening. Three crew members, Sergei Rosansky of Roscosmos, Randy Bresnik of NASA, and Paolo Nespoli of ESA, the European Space Agency, step two complete of their departure, and they are now on their way home. Buddy, Moscow. Go ahead. Buddy, the next reach of Compass is? Randy, uh, we will have to send it, yes. So, uh, the start is 0940. Got it. Buddy, I repeat, the compass uh, start is 9.40 and uh, the end 10.05. Okay, 9.40, uh, 10.05, copy that. So what about the COM? We will have relay. Com. You know, we are not expecting any LOSs. So waiting. Yeah. Uh, we have one hour, 20 minutes start. That's a lot. Ugh. Moscow, buddy, how do you copy? We copy you loud and clear. So there will be an hour of uh, break. And at 9.40, we will go to page 48 uh, and perform the steps on that page. Buddy, it's a go to send G4 command. Copy, it's Golf 4 command. Uh, it is being sent. Therefore, is sent. Copy. Then go to page 48. You can start the step number one, preparation for operation. Yeah, it will be probably closer to 9.40, right, Moscow? Yes, uh, uh, you can wait. Sounds good. We are standing by uh, and ready to support you. Copy Moscow. And so he's capturing the last glints of sunlight as the sun about to set on both the station and the orbiting craft. The Soyuz with three crew members inside of it, Sergei Rosansky, Randy Bresnik, and Paolo Nespoli. 
Still departing the area of the International Space Station in the early stages, but its journey begun to return these th three back to Earth after 139 days aboard the International Space Station. That's Blee Rosansky and Bresnik. Rosansky, the Soyuz commander for this mission, overseeing their departure and all of the stages coming up for the rest of the evening. Paolo Nespoli in the left seat, Randy Bresnik in the right seat for all of the remainder of the operations. But everything going extremely smoothly and right on time, right per the timeline so far today, with that undocking coming at 11.14 p.m. Central Time, 12.14 a.m. Eastern Time, the vehicle separating from the Rosviet module. It executed its first departure burn successfully, and that's setting it to depart away from the International Space Station, eventually setting it up for uh, its future deorbit burn. But we'll stick around while the Soyuz remains in sight as they continue to depart the area, again, in the early stages, but definitely now on their way home to that landing in Kazakhstan. And one thing to note with the departure of the spacecraft, Expedition 54 has officially begun on board the International Space Station. Three crew members still on board, Russian cosmonaut Alexander Mazurkin, who's the commander of Expedition 54. He's joined by two NASA astronauts, Mark Vandehei and Joe Acaba. Those three have been on board since mid-September and are going to remain on board as one half of the Expedition 54 crew until they return home in late February. Uh, and the now vacant Rosviet module won't be vacant for very long as the next three crew members to fly to the station are going to be making their way uphill just this coming weekend um, with the three on the left there, Anton Shaplerov, Scott Tingle, and Norishigi Kanai. Uh, set to take off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome um, uh, again just over this weekend in uh, the early hours uh, Sunday morning or the afternoon hours Kazakhstan time on Sunday. And they'll begin a two-day journey to the International Space Station, eventually arriving on Tuesday. And once there, they'll return the Expedition 54 crew back up to its full six-person contingent and continue all the work being done on board the International Space Station. So with this on-time undocking, again, just everything going very smoothly so far this evening. The hatch, the hatch is closed at 8.02 p.m. Central. The undocking coming right on time at 11.14 p.m. And this now sets us up for our final coverage of the night, which is going to be that deorbit burn and landing coverage. Uh, here in Central Time, we'll actually see you tomorrow. Uh, we'll be starting our coverage at 1.15 a.m. on Thursday um, in just a little while from now. And that'll be, again, our deorbit burn and landing coverage. The deorbit burn scheduled to come at 1.44 a.m., setting up for that parachute-assisted landing in Kazakhstan at 2.37 a.m. Central, 3.37 a.m. Eastern. And as typical with landings, we'll look to get video from teams down there on the ground with the search and recovery forces uh, and hopefully able to uh, brave the elements as, again, the weather report coming out of Kazakhstan today. Uh, somewhat clear, but uh, definitely some frigid temperatures uh, hovering around 10 degrees Fahrenheit with the wind chill at about negative 5 and then uh, several inches of snow on the ground. So 
everything going very smoothly so far with the departure of the Soyuz MSO-5 vehicle. And we'll rejoin you in just a couple of hours as we get ready to uh, watch them move through the Earth's atmosphere, plunge down to the steppe of Kazakhstan and see them come out and return to Earth after nearly six months in space. So be sure to tune back in in just a couple of hours to welcome these three crew members home. And thanks for tuning in to see that really picturesque undocking as the station flew over Mongolia and made a pass over the Himalayan mountains. So with that, though, we'll go ahead and wrap up our undocking coverage. One, two down, one more to go. But for now, we'll go ahead and sign off. This is Mission Control Houston. Mm -hmm.